Good evening and welcome. This is Revved Up and Relive Live, brought to you by the Spirit of Motorsport. TV. Thank you for rejoining us. It's so great to have you back. Remember, this is an interactive experience. So get involved in the conversation. Feel free to fire your comments or your questions our way. We have quite a special guest that's rejoining the, the show again this evening. So we cannot wait to welcome back in. Before we do, let's just check out a little bit about what he was getting up to at the weekend. Well, without further ado, Mr. Billy McConnell, welcome back to the studio. Hey guys, how are we doing? <laughs> it gives me goosebumps. Balls. I don't know about you. How does it make you feel watching that? I just, I just seen the first time. I think the dean was louder than the bikes out there. <laughs> you made me cheer up. <laughs> it's brilliant. <laughs> it's brilliant. Loved it, Billy. Congratulations. It's such a special thing to you. I was felt very proud to be there and very proud for all of you and to watch the team. And it was such a special moment for everyone. So um, thank you for accepting our invitation again onto the studio. Oh, um, yeah, and we just wanted to celebrate with you because we know how much of a build-up you had to that win. And obviously, Nadine, we're going to come to you in a sec. It's lovely to have you and the team there and the support thank that you, you give Billy along the way. <laughs> <laughs> First of all, before we do move on, we've got to make a comment about that stunning background. I know we just had a brief chat about it. Beautiful, absolutely stunning. I yeah, love it. Yeah, so, so the Triumph uh, mural. So it's a, yeah, I would big the company up, but I still had to pay for it. So let's <laughs> not do that. <laughs> but yeah, no, it's, it's a wallpaper uh, company actually called uh, Wall Source, which is actually, uh, that picture is actually on it because I live 500 meters from the Triumph factory and um, work for Triumph. That Triumph always got a special place in my heart. And uh, yeah, love the actual brand and uh, love working for them. So we're, and it fit, fitted quite well. So uh, it was a beautiful shot. And um, yeah, it's a good feature. I love it. I think you deserve a freebie now after that little plug. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, Phil. So tell us a bit about how it felt to bring that win home finally on Sunday. Yeah, the, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was, um, it was a beautiful feeling, you know, like we know how hard uh, the team worked with Alan and the whole team and uh, all the guys at PCR that get all the prep and Darren and my mechanic Shannon and that. And we obviously haven't won it. We didn't get the winner of race last year because I was injured. So it's actually been a long time since I won one, since the year before when we almost won the, the stock championship on the Suzuki. So it was a build up from there and I was getting a little bit frustrated. I felt like I put um, come back from injury and put so much effort in training and, you know, working hard and, and, and staying focused. And then we sort of, we weren't getting the results from it. So, um, but yeah, so it, just, it, was, a, it was a nice, um, it was nice as well because it was the first time I've ridden the BMW in the wet at Donington weekend, so I didn't feel particularly too comfortable with the limited time we had because, as you know, the weather was absolutely horrendous there, and the um, the Donington's just sketchy. You know, it's 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 one of the slipperiest tracks normally when it's when it's fully wet um, because you don't get the heat into the tires. So, and then after my uh, after my um, little misfortune at Silverstone where I crashed in qualifying and then rode the bike completely off and then had to start from the back of the grid. 
sort of didn't want to follow in the same footsteps. So all the practice sessions and that were just uh, tinkling around and just making sure we kept upright so we didn't wreck the bike uh, um, so we could make all the sessions to try to improve stuff. Um, but Shannon um, and Daz come up with an extra, um, some mapping and stuff like that for the bike that we thought would work. And then as it started to dry out just before it, K-Tech guys made a bit of a spring change uh, through Shannon's commands. And then, um, yeah, that went and um, just took off from the race. And I was just sort of settling in there, having a bit of a battle with Danny and, you know, messing around. And I just thought, you know what, I can I can have a go at this and just sort of, like, thing just sort of come over me and just flick the switch. And um, we just started change, charging forward. And then I got into a second and then just saw my pit board. I had, like, a second behind me. And I was like, oh, seconds, seconds are right now. I could just see roll up ahead. I said, no, I think I can get this. And then just... And then just, yeah, kept pushing forward. And then um, obviously when you're, when you're leading the race and you're about to win and you, you, that, that um, build-up starts to come the lap before and you're like, stay focused, stay focused. But because I still had the charge and catch him, it sort of obviously didn't really set in until I wheeled across the checkered flag once I definitely knew I had it. And, uh, yeah, I had a cry on the way around. And, um, you know, it was a bit of emotional because, um, yeah, the whole team and us have been trying for it for so hard. and. And it was nice to bring a bit of joy to the team for the effort that they've been putting in. So, um, yeah, I was really, really happy with that. We got some great picks. So, there you are. Yeah. Brilliant. So, yeah, no, it was really good. Just the only downfall, so I think, was um, the second race in the drive. We didn't really have the uh, the full pace to um, – I could just do consistent times, but not enough to sort of go with the front guys. And then I was actually having a good battle with, um, with uh, Chrissy in the um, – with Chrissy in the uh, second race, and I was that close and that tight in behind him that I didn't even realise that it was the last lap until he shut off and I almost run into the back of him because I was that focused in trying to get him for the next lap that I didn't even realise it was the last lap. So, um, but yeah, and then it's, it's always better if you win the second race because you go home a little bit more happier, but when you finish the first and a fifth, you sort of got to go home questioning yourself and <laughs> trying to come up with the next solution. <laughs> So what do you think it, it is moving forward into the next round for you then? So if, if you you did get the first and the fifth, what do you think you need to do or need to be more focused on moving yeah, into the next round? Work, we're just trying to work on um, getting um, get, getting the – well, I can't even say getting the groups with it because I've been on the bike, you know, on the half the year. So there's just one thing that we're sort of – I don't the, – the trouble is, is with I feel comfortable on the bike. And I had a little chat with Limfoot as well with the bike and – the, the, the thing is you come into the pits and you can't actually put your finger on to where area where you uh, where you like it doesn't feel like I'm struggling like Alton Park I did a lap time went yeah that was wicked killer looked down at my dash it was a 38 and I felt like I hit everything right and did it all so I was scratching my head there and we had to go back to some different forks that I've run in like uh, in super sports specs before and when I started the year out and we've been swapping in between and um, we haven't really had a, like a, a full on test day where we just fire a lot of stuff at it and get it in but then also in hindsight, in super stock, you don't really need to change a great deal because it's relatively stock. So I think I just need to have a have a have a little regroup and and try to ride it maybe a little bit different. Um, but yeah, it's just it's just every day's learning. But the boys are riding fast as well. So I think I think brands will be good for us. Um, you know, every, as every race it always says, moving on to the next round. But yeah, we uh, we got some stuff. We've been talking to Shannon. We, we've been trying different throttle maps and different uh, characteristics of the bike and trying to use all the settings that the um, BMW has got, which we've sort of only sort of just started unlocking the true potential of the BMW. So I think we've got a lot to work with there. We still haven't tried a few things with, with the chassis. So, But unfortunately, with Superstock, you only get two 20-minute sessions to try that. So, um, And with the weather being a little bit crazy, you know, if it's a wet race or wet, if it's one, one bit's damp or you have a crash like I did at all, and you basically just go back and revert back to your base setting and go from there. But unfortunately, we've only got one race at Brands and it's all over again. So, boo. <laughs> yeah. So, um, we might have to throw the bike out of the Superbike class and have a chuck in that as well. Ah, I love that. Um, so, going back to your win, Bill, how do you keep your cool? So, you know that you're watching the, the pit bulls, you're watching the times, and you're like, how do you keep your cool knowing that you're almost there? You're about to potentially take the win. How do you keep your mind, your mindset? On well, point. So, like I was just like I speak about this sometimes. Like some days when it's when it's your day and you can't falter and you can, you can just ride absolutely perfect. You actually like I've had it a few times when I was in the six hundred. So as soon as you take off from the grid, you almost run in the back of someone. You're like, wow, like you're gonna have the um, 
you're on today, you know, like, and then once you get a gap, you can almost start thinking about your dinner or the celebrations after you're like, focus, you know, focus, do what two laps to go or something. <laughs> happen. But that's when you know it's your day. And then, um, and then you can have a race like two hours later and then the guys are pulling away from me. Like, what the hell, what's going on? So, you know, there's something that I'm still trying to activate and work it out completely. Like I'd love to have the solution so I could just activate that side of the brain every time. But unfortunately it doesn't happen all the time. And, uh, the, you know, everything's got to work in harmony with the bike and the team and, and move forward. But I think, you know, sometimes you think you've got it sweet and then it, then, it, and then it bites you in the back and throws you down on the on the ground and then you've got to start again and you've got to rebuild all that that confidence and stuff. So um, on the last lap, because I, I didn't actually pass him to the chicane, I actually thought I was catching him. I thought I'd be able to pass him in the Melbourne loop, but I actually got really, really good drive and the bike hooked really well up out of uh, coppice there and um, managed to get him into the chicane. And then I was just like, right, just go defensive here. And, because Rollo led the whole race, I sort of knew that um, he, he wouldn't have known where I was quicker, where I wasn't, because he only had two corners to sort of try to make a comeback as well. So, you know, when you led that whole time, you're not used to being in a battle because you've just taken away. So when someone passes you, like, surprises you, and you're almost stunned that you can't uh, come back with a counteraction. So I just knew in Melbourne, Luke, if we could just get in there really uh, and go defensive in there tight and block pass it and squirt it out there, and the BMW was firing really hard out the corners in those tricky conditions. So... And then, yeah, then, then you get the Goddard's, you're only one corner away from him, and you start almost hyperventilating and then <laughs> trying to get it around there and then you're just, like, looking to the side and making sure no one's squirting up the inside of you. And then once you get close to the white lines, you know it's all done and you pop a little wheelie. <laughs> and then it's cool seeing everyone hanging over the fence and then that was brilliant. Yeah, yeah, and then you wheelie. Wicked. Um, all right, so we've got a couple of comments here, Bill. So we've just got a, a question here from Christopher SH. He says, Billy, you're going to be back in Superbike soon and are you doing any track day tutoring? Um, and then finally, what's it like racing without any fans in the track? So let's start with the, are you going to be in Superbikes soon? Should we start with that one? Yeah, we'll have to wait and see. You know, we've got brands to get through yet. Um, definitely want to stay with the, the OMG team, but we'll, uh, we'll, we still haven't really sorted um, anything out But the OMG family. I'm definitely, uh, yeah, I don't want to say too much anyway because it probably ruined a surprise. So, um, but yeah, definitely want to, um, you know, the Superbikes, the pinnacle class of motorsport racing and motorcycle racing in the UK. Um, I've had a good, a good few years in super stock and i love the class as well and um you know it's, i've got a bit of a bee in my bonnet for not winning it come close with second and last year we didn't get to have a stab and then this year i've just uh, had too many mistakes of my own thing and with a shortened championship and only 12 races you, there's not enough time to catch any up and i sort of i'd like to put that right as well so i'll sit down with alan and paul and we'll run through some things and see what the best option is and uh, go from there brilliant and will you be doing any track day tutoring soon uh, well, I hopefully do some track day to eat. Uh, yeah, um, used to do a few, a uh, few in Spain over the winter time and stuff like that. We focused, and that it was always good to have a beer and a good crack with the guys and stuff like that. But I don't see. Um, I'm, I'm not sure. I haven't been, um, haven't been asked to do it. But we're pretty busy with work. We try it anyway at the moment, and uh, the COVID thing makes everything a little bit difficult because sometimes you've got to come back and you've got to do the two week quarantine. So it sort of doesn't really outweigh doing it. But if he wants to get in touch, we might be able to do some private stuff. <laughs> yes, like it. And um, uh, finally, what's it like racing without fans in the track, around the track? I actually had this conversation last night. Uh, no, mm. today I went to see my uh, my hip uh, my hip surgeon because I dislocated my hip um in 2017 when I was with FS3 and there's a chance that when you dislocate your hip you can have your your bone density your bone dies so I had an injury I had a crash on my mountain bike and hit it against the tree and, and, and give it a bit of a knock so I was worried about it so I just went back to see him today and uh, and he we did an MRI scan and got the all clear from that so the bone is completely sweet and he's really really happy with it so that was one a good relief to know that there's no further treatment on that um and also, we were just talking about the whole COVID thing, and then he goes, "Oh, what's it like without all the fans there?" And I said, "I said, I said, in in some way, it sucks really much because obviously, when you're winning that, you're going around and you're waving because you're so celebrating, you're so used to it, but then you realise you're not waving at anyone other than the marshals, which are always <laughs> legends, and they're always just as pumped as the, the fans. But it is weird when you look around and, and when you go to the paddock, you know, when you burn through on the scooter and that, there's no one through there, and um, yeah, so that that makes it a little bit uh, bad, but um, the best thing about no fans there is when you pack up at the end of the day, say goodbye to the team, mate, you spurt on the motorway and you're straight out and you're home within two hours and no, no traffic jams. Um, so that's the only positive, I think, about the no fans thing. Other than that, they're always really missed and it really wrecks it because I won the race, went to go to the bar and the bar was shut. So, uh, 
yeah, that, that sucks as well. COVID's really wrecking everything. So, um, <laughs> but yeah, no, so it's, it's, it's obviously, you know, the, the BSB is known for its uh, massive support base of the spectators. You know, you get thirty to 40,000 people there every event. Um, it's Nadine's first year over, and I'm like, oh, yeah, you know, you should see this pace when it's when it's packed. You can't even get in, the motorhome sections, all that. And uh, and it's not until you start realising, and you know, that none of your friends can come and all that stuff. And mm. it's... Uh, it sucks, but, you know, they've done a great job just to get us all out there racing, and so we've actually got something to talk about and be on the TV, and, you know, so that's, that's it is it is what it is, and, you know, everyone's doing the best thing about it, so um, I guess with the winter months coming, wearing a face mask at, like, Donington when it was something eight degrees, it was, uh, it was actually quite nice to have the warm thing on your face. <laughs> <laughs> agreed, agreed. Guys, uh, producer Raiders just asked if there's any way we could put the light on near yeah. you, if that's okay. Yeah. It's, it's yeah, starting to get nice. dark early now, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. woohoo! Beautiful, yeah. lovely. So, but tell me about the celebrations. Yeah. Crew to come in, yeah. <laughs> <I know. laughs> you didn't need hair and makeup. You're beautiful <laughs> enough. Aren't you? yeah. Um, so tell us about the celebrations. What happened on Sunday? Did you? You yeah, obviously with, uh, the bar yeah. wasn't closed at home. So I've got a. Uh, 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 it keeps me on the straight now because I've got a good. Uh, uh, company that I get the motorhome, River Motorhomes, um, which is based just in Coventry. So I get my motorhome through them guys. So I have to uh, uh, drive it back. So it sort of stops. So I don't want to um, have a drink and obviously shouldn't drink drive anyway. But when you've got like a $40,000 motorhome or whatever they are, um, <laughs> cruising down the road, bingo, and hanging your beer out the window, it's probably not the best image for it either. So we normally just get back here and then clean it out. And then I go drop it back on the Monday. So we got back here, had a few beers and then... Um, yeah, had a few beers and then we had to go do that the next day. I uh, had to go to work the next day, so um, we've been really busy there at Drive. So, uh, but yeah, we definitely had a few on uh, on Sunday night. But unfortunately, it's a it sort of cuts it a bit short. If you don't get to celebrate with all the team and all that, sort of, you're yeah. sort of just sitting on the sofa drinking yeah. on your own, which is yeah. something I'm used to anyway. But <laughs> <laughs> with your beautiful lady, though, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, we give it a uh, yeah. So, Nadine. <laughs> Um, it must be quite special, Billy, to have behind every powerful man, there's obviously a powerful woman, isn't there? So to have your lady there, like cheering you on and just, yeah, just that uh, support and lean on, with, right? Uh, she's been a real driving force this year. We, we've, uh, we've, we've been with Harvey, um, Harvey Fairburn, uh, did us some meal plan and some training stuff. And we've been training um, every morning down at uh, the Stoke Golden Gym there, the engine shed in the morning uh, through... And that's been good. That starts, yeah, we start down there at like six o'clock in the morning and like, because i got to start, um, start work at eight. So we get down there every morning and if we don't do it, we feel really bad from uh, not doing it. So because, and now it's um, dark when we leave the house and get down yeah. to the gym, we actually feel like Rocky Barboa turning the lights <laughs> on and getting up the stairs and all that. <laughs> So now that's good. And then we try to get to the gym at night time. But at least if we got that morning thing done, we're sort of done for the day. And then because Harvey, um, he sorted our meal plans and that out. So yeah, Nads is in the kitchen cooking all our meals as well. So we got them all in the plastic Tupperwares and that. So that's why it was good to uh, to get the win as well and to try to, you know, try to get something back for all the hard work that we've been putting yeah. in. So. It's definitely been um a good build up to it though, the effort, the energy. So it was really good to get a bit of a reward, you know, for both of us for seeing mm -hmm. Bill and, you know, all his achievements. So it's been awesome. Yeah. Definitely. How has it been for you this season, Nadine? So you, you've come over, you're over from Australia, you're away from the family as well, but obviously here able to support Billy, which is a special thing as well. Look, it's, it's always hard being away from your people and your comforts. But um, it was hard being away from Billy as well. So mm. being here has been an amazing journey, an amazing experience um, to get to sort of have a taste of this, of what he does and what he does so well and all this beautiful race family. I don't feel alone at all. So it's been as overwhelming as everything's been. It's been a very humbling experience to be here mm. and, you know, just to take on everything. And, you know, it feels good. And it, like Billy said, as much as, you know, it's nice to hear a motivational driving force. He's been my driving force too. So it's been really good to have each other and do this together, you know. So, yeah, it's been awesome, I have to say. Um, this COVID, it's like COVID, what COVID, you know. Mm. It's, um, it was great to, you know, every day is busy. We're, we're trying to, you know, in the gym, if not in the gym, moving forward to the next race and, you know, the next achievement or the next accomplishment. And, yeah, it's been good. I've also had the opportunity to, uh, tick off a few things off my own bucket list and do some yoga teacher training and 
get some studying in and trying you know, to kick me out of the shed. Trying to, <laughs> trying to, you know, have my own piece of, uh, you know, hold my own space, so which has been awesome. Yeah. And, yeah, it's been it's been a good opportunity to do that because I think you know back home you get so caught up in life and you don't get to stop and embrace what we have and it's been yeah I feel blessed so this has been a great opportunity a great great gift you know so yeah and, and lovely for the two of you because you can you have a little bit of downtime together so you can go out and have some yeah. a little bit of fun because it's not all it's not all just racing is it oh definitely not. <laughs> Honestly, Hayley, like, you know, even when we're training, yeah. Uh, yeah, we're trying to overcome my fear of heights. So, oh, yeah. right, okay. Uh, well, she didn't swear at me once on that. <laughs> so, yeah, look, like, even if we are, when we're training or we're doing our own thing, we have a right fun time, you know. We, mm -hmm. uh, we definitely know how to take the piss out of each other and we definitely know how to keep each other on our edge, you know, but... We, we do pretty good. I think we, we've laughed so hard when we're together and it's kind of lonely when we're not together. So, yeah, definitely. So it's been a good good times, good times here. So, yeah. So we've got to touch on, I know we touched on a little bit in the show when we had Devo on, and we know about the bromance, obviously. It's a beautiful thing <laughs> to watch. So we've got to touch on, and you guys got together. So you were introduced through your sister, that's right, who's Devo's wife. So it was actually uh, the first time I'd mm. gone out for a while and uh, went to watch the Mundine and Green fight we had uh, showing at one of the pubs back home. So my sister was like, come on out, you know, be good, get out, have a good night. So I thought, oh, stuff it, all right, we'll go. And uh, met uh, Dave and a few of their mates all from outside and I remember clearly standing outside having a drink and meeting Bill and a few other guys. And in my head thinking, yeah, nah, 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 nah. <laughs> and, oh. um, yeah. <laughs> and actually, oh, yeah, <laughs> and that night, Bill, uh, you know, as the night went on and we kept drinking, uh, Bill. Billy the Creek come out. Billy the Creek came out <laughs> and um, he came up to me and said, um, I'm going to marry you. And I was like, oh, sorry, what was your name? <laughs> you know, how are you? Yeah, well, let me know how that works out for you. So, um. Uh, yeah, and lo and behold, uh, persistence nice. pays off because it's going. So, and yeah, it was uh, we got to know each other a bit more, and uh, the the romance flared. So it was just nice to meet. Um, it was almost like meeting my mirror person, you know, and mirror mm. image in mm. in Bill. So that was quite scary, actually. <laughs> but, yeah. Yeah. but yeah, so we met, and um, yeah, we're having family. So. So when's the wedding? Oh, you never know. Yeah, the wedding. Dad's texting to answer that question. <laughs> Brilliant. The topic of our conversation. She did say right? position no. pays off, so. Position does <laughs> pay off. So let's, uh, well, well, look, we'd like to do it sooner than later. And um, hopefully once all this uh this season's over and we can put aside, you know, get some downtime in. At least we get a cheap wedding because you can only have about 10 people. Right? <laughs> Perfect time, all right. And it's done soon. <laughs> yeah. We might have a surprise for you guys. Okay. <laughs> yeah. And were you into the racing before you met Davo and, and Bill? Was it, uh, was no. it your thing anyway? No, not really, to be honest. Mm -hmm. It wasn't my thing. It was certainly my sister's thing. So she's mm -hmm. always loved, had this love of bikes and uh, the love of the, you know, motorsport. Um, and, you know, I'd watch it with my mates and things, but never really got really into it. You know, it was on in the background. Um, but, yeah, this has been my first introduction to it. So there's a lot of things that I'm trying to pick up and learn and, you know, um, get a hold of. And, yeah, it's been, it's been quite good. It's, it's amazing how it's got a funny way of pulling you in, though, you know. So there's this, yeah, there's this something about it. It's addictive. But, um, yeah. It's a chosen family, isn't it? It's like a... It is, and yeah. race family that you do, that develops. It's just amazing, you know. I've mm. met so many amazing humans, and to see the love and the heart that goes into everything, and you can't. I said, you know, I was amazed. Actually, brought a tear to my eye watching them in the in the garage, and you know, when uh, Bill had his accident and they had to rebuild the bike, you know, watching this amazing team just pulled together and it was like built, bees in a hive you know, within two yeah. hours and they had this bike so you know from his success on the track to it all starts from 
as every single person, you know, it begins with everyone and it, 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 they can't do it without each other. It's just amazing to see, you know, it all come together and this beautiful people. So they put their heart into it. So yeah, it may pulls you in. It really pulls at your heartstrings. Mm. Definitely. I can feel it as well when I'm there and I'm yeah. in the but if you can feel it off everybody. Tell us a bit about this nice. video that you shared, Nadine. Hey, well, Check out your motorhome. Yeah, River, River motorhomes, check them out. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, Great we color. got this. We got <laughs> so tell us a bit about when you shot that. Where are you, where are you heading to? Is that round that one? Was, uh, round one Donington. That was at Donington, yeah. Round one. Okay. So that was my first experience. I was uh, pumped. <laughs> and obviously it was a lot warmer because we we're in t-shirts and that so yeah i know because uh, we might be we might have to spend a bit of winter here now because of the covid thing due to uh, the regulations of flying back and not being able to fly back out so um i think we're we're, we're, we're still pumped again i think nans hasn't quite experienced the british winter yet so well uh, i don't know if i've experienced a british summer yet to be <laughs> honest <laughs> so yeah so, uh, hint. Oh, sweet. So, yeah, we're just live, trying to live the dream, live our best life, as they say, make love the most it. of it. Love it, love it. Um, so, remember, guys, this is an interactive show. Anyone that's watching and tuning in, please feel free to fire your questions and comments our way, and we will send them over to Billy or Nadine as well. We do have uh, a fan that's going to be joining us in very, very soon, too. So, Bill, um, we, we want to know a little bit more about your triumph involvement. So, we touched on it a little bit on the previous show. So you're there full time in the week, is that right? So before yeah, well, you self-employed, so um, you know the the trouble with them is I'm a development writer, so can't go into too much of the details because you are sign a big fat contract, you know, for all the confidentiality stuff. So, um, but basically, I'm a test writer, and we test all the new stuff that comes out, and we got like different sorts of tests. Um, we use a lot of different test tracks uh, for different things, and um, so there's a designated team. It's like a mechanic. Uh, of mine could Lee and then normally myself and another uh, guy that works here on and also pesky as well we normally just do like track endurance and all sorts of stuff really so uh, but yeah it's really good and obviously I keep riding the bike every single day so it could vary from their cruiser bike to sometimes when they had the Moto 2 stuff come on out um, to doing all the tests and 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 uh, yeah, basically just riding them and just back to backing them with the other riders and just trying to find faults and, and uh, just put them to the test really and make sure. Uh, and it's quite crazy some of the stuff that you you actually see how much effort goes into production bikes. Like you like say you know how much all the testing goes into them that you wouldn't actually you you look at a bike you go, oh yeah I'll replace that with saying fill it because it might break and you realise how and then now I've worked there you realise how much of those those bikes get abused and tested to the absolute limit on purpose for the worst to sort of get ridden like from like how the worst possible rider could ride them that you realize those bikes come standard so so strong and and been through so many tests that you actually anything else that you put on the bike probably hasn't been tested as much as what we we've, we've tested it so uh yeah and it's really good i've been to a triumph now for 10 11 years so uh when i first come over paul young used to be a test rider there he got me and pesky the job there and i've been there ever since and then obviously i was lucky enough to ride for triumph with the smiths uh, family uh and um and won the championship for them in uh, 2014. So I've actually got my name in stone out the front, which is uh, oh, wow. pretty cool on the entry in there. They start with the Fonz, uh, Steve McQueen, and this and that. And it goes through all these beautiful names. And then it comes to the mine, which doesn't look like it should be in there. And then I've got, yeah, Luke Stapleford's in there and Gary Johnson for the TT. And so, yeah, it's pretty cool. And then, uh, yeah, so that's that's obviously going to be there before on the entrance to the exhibition centre. So, yeah, so we are trying to, um, you know, when it works, because when normally when I go back to Australia, Obviously, the weather becomes too bad to uh, do stuff here unless we go to Spain. Um, but then sometimes the work just drops down for the other two riders, and I normally go back, uh, back, back to Australia anyway. So, um, but at the moment we've been really, really busy. So we only had probably like three weeks off in total while the COVID thing was on. So because um, we're a limited number of the team anyway, there's only uh, most of the time you're on the bike anyway, so you're self-isolating anyway. <laughs> uh, yeah. But most of the time you're not really near each other anyway. So. Um, uh, other than the mechanic, and then we've been back to back with the riders. So, yeah, it's been really good. You know, keep to keep busy, and uh, I think it's a big been a big part for my bike fitness as well. So, um, 
you know, obviously with the training and that, but just riding any sort of motorbike a day, you're still using the brake, you're using the clutch, you're using the throttle. So it's all similar muscle, just that wind force holding yourself forward and your neck muscles. Like, so like normally when you go to Spain at the start of the year, if you haven't done any riding, it's just all the things that you can't train, like your neck and your lower back and your hamstring, like from where you've been cooped up in that riding position. So luckily enough, I get to ride all the time. So it's sort of, even if it's a Bonneville or anything like that, it's still, still a motorbike, you're still doing all the same things. So I think it helps with the racing side. So um, yeah, and it's, it gives me structure as well, you know. So I get up early, train in the morning and cycle to work and then um, ride all day and then cycle back. And then it's given me that whole bit of the day. So sometimes when I get up, do that, and then because I have to ring most mornings and if I haven't got any work, you sort of say, oh, fuck. What I'm going to do today, so it gives you that gives you that structure. You know, it's hard to come up with uh, unless you're, uh, you know, riding motocross every single day, which is uh, or doing something like that, which is hard to do. It's just, unless you want to be yeah. painting your house the whole time or doing something else quite, quite hard. Anyway. So, uh, and I'm not very very good handyman, so um, I'm better off at work. And, and uh, Alan Smith actually gave me the best advice once. He said, "Just work harder and pay a professional to do it." <laughs> uh, when it comes to that, but all my life sockets are still hanging off the house for the last four years. Still waiting to get a deal on some. So I've got someone. I'll give them a call. Yeah. So you mentioned the benefits of you getting the time on, uh, with Triumph and and working with those guys and how that can transition into bring it into a race format but what about things that you need to be more conscious of when you're, you're moving from the triumph to the bmw can there be anything that can hinder you if you're not fully tuned into it was there uh, it's not really it's the not, yeah, uh, yeah there, there, there is and there isn't but i've been doing it that long now i think if you anytime you just hop on your race bike after a certain mm -hmm. amount of time off everything feels wrong anyway because you've been two weeks off you know, it's no different than going from a motocross bike or something like that, hopping on your race bike. You know, that feels different. Well, it is different, but, you know, you just got to, uh, you know, yeah, definitely going from a, a, a Rocket 3 with a big big three-cylinder, big car engine in it, and you hop on your little sports bike. Geez, it, it feels like nothing's underneath you. So, yeah. but it's still, um, it's still riding a bike. So, um, you know, you, by the time you roll out of pit lane, everything's back to really exactly where you remember. It's it's almost like no different than when Rossi and that they ride those mini bikes and then they ride the dirt track bikes and then they hop on the M1 and it's no different. You know, it's just you're still better off riding something than you are not riding nothing. I think. Mm, great, brilliant. All right, so Bill, we've got um, a special guest to join us in the studio, obviously in in Spirit Motorsport style. We've got another little lovely person to join us on the screen and in the studio um i think you might know him i'm not quite sure let's just see if he's a familiar face to you shannon you're on mute you need to turn your mute off you're on mute. yeah he's at his boyfriend's house <laughs> Shannon, welcome. Shannon Etheridge, you are uh, Billy's crew chief. Welcome into the studio. I was about to start bagging you out, Shannon. <laughs> <laughs> lucky. <laughs> no, lucky I didn't send all those photos. Any questions, Hayley, why I haven't won a race? <laughs> <laughs> so, Shannon, thanks a lot for coming in. I uh, really appreciate your time. And, you know, your name got dropped a few times there when Billy was talking. So, how does it feel for you to, to bring the win home on, on Sunday? Uh, it, was, journey. Uh, it was unreal. It's been a long time coming, really. Um, so it was really good to, to have him back on top step and in wet conditions, even better. Because, uh, you know, we didn't know what was going to happen, really, when he got on the bike. So um, to get into the race and then halfway through the race, start to put down the lap times he did was, was incredible. Mm. So now we just need a dry wind. It burns out and we'll be set for the year. No pressure. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So Shannon, tell us a bit about how you became, um, how you started working with Bill, because I know you've got a background in racing yourself, so you, you came to the UK to race, is that right? Yeah, I've known Bill for a long time, uh, yeah. from back in Australia, from a lot different uh, side of Australia to one another, we're about 18 hour drive apart, so, but uh, but we met back there through his dad really, his dad right, built some motorbikes that I raced, mm -hmm. um, and then I come to the UK, Billy was already over here. And, um, and yeah, we just obviously lived in the same sort of area and, and rekindled our friendship. And um, in 2009, I was just doing some world endurance stuff and Billy was on the raceways bike. So he asked me to go and help him uh, and it just sort of started from there really. So, and uh, every time I've been here, I've been, uh, been with him since really. So 
we've got a pretty good understanding of one another and uh, none of we don't take any shit from one another so That's it's good. pretty on, on, honest relationship that works well really and we and live I together as well yeah, I was going to say, I believe you live with, with the, this lovely couple as well. Is it just the three of you? Yeah. yeah. Oh, wow. I bet you've got some juicy gossip then, Shannon. Oh, and, <laughs> and, 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 our, and our stepson, David. And his stepson, David. <laughs> dish it, Shazzy, dish it. <laughs> <laughs> but who, where does stepson David live? Do you put him under the stairs? Right. <laughs> No, Davo, I mean, like, he's, oh, okay, okay, he's, okay, got, okay. he's got a kennel out the back. <laughs> 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 Shannon, you're going to have to get Shannon to come over and have a chat. Yeah, Shannon, you can come over and have a chat. So, Shannon, what's been your favourite uh, memory so far with Bill? Would it be the win on Sunday? Or do you have another one to add to that? Um, <laughs> I think probably, I would say maybe 2018 at Donington Park um, <laughs> on the Hawk Suzuki in Superstock. Because he'd done his hip, he'd been out for a long time, didn't know if he could actually ride. And then uh, we got there and hadn't even really done much riding on the bike at all. And went out in practice and qualify, practice and so forth and was doing not so bad. And then went out and qualifying. and he came in and we put a new tyre in and he said, oh, he was like third or fourth. And he said, oh, don't worry about this, you know, I've got this, don't stress. I was like, oh, no, this is, uh, he's either going to go fastest by a long way or this thing's going way over the fence <laughs> <laughs> and he went out and put on pole and done some silly time and then went out in the race and absolutely smashed him so it was pretty that was probably the best comeback i've seen from him 100 percent. it was unreal it must have been tough for you when he got injured and also he ended up with his uh, appendix issue it was your appendix wasn't it bill yeah, <laughs> Shannon never wants to wipe another arsehole again. <laughs> My only enjoyment of the day was getting to jab him with a needle every day. Yeah. <laughs> getting him squirming. <laughs> it must have been, genuinely though, it must have been quite a tough moment knowing that he, he was going to be held up yeah. for a while. Well, I, was, I was actually in Australia when it happened, so mm. um, I'd had to fly back for some family stuff. Uh, so I missed that Alton Park race. Uh, and then whilst I was there, uh, he texts me saying, oh, I'm in hospital. I was like, what? And then Dave was like, oh, he misses you that much. He's had to, he, you've broken him. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then, uh, so, yeah, so I flew back and, yeah, he'd, uh, obviously not for him personally, but I was coming back anyway. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, but, yeah, he was in hospital. And the first time I'd seen him was once, you know, the operation and everything was done and it was pretty horrific. <clears throat> Mm. Tell them that story, Shazzy, when uh, when you um, when nurse, you were, uh, when Davo was <laughs> over, we had the beanbag, the beanbag because I was laid out on the side. Oh, that was Every horrible. Day, I had a, a like a measuring cup out out, out the back, like a, a, a jug, and I had my uh, drain bag on the side. I had to <laughs> oh. open it up, pour my uh, the infection stuff out the bag into this cup, and then I had to use a syringe to to soak it up and count the measurements so I could see if the numbers were going down for the doctor. But I'd always like rinse it out and leave it out the side because the stuff really smelled. It was on and the kitchen side. It was. It wasn't outside. And then, and then, and then <laughs> we had to. We got a new bean bag, and there was too many beans in there, and I couldn't get up. So I said, "Just get a container and shovel out some of the beans, and put out the beans out the bean bag." So Shazzy walks out and grabs this cup, and he goes, "Oh, what's this for?" And then he sniffed it <laughs> to see what was in there, and he was just like projectile vomited straight out the back door. <laughs> Oh, it was horrible. It, it was horrible. I can't even never forget. <laughs> <laughs> oh. nah, it wasn't good. I don't know how I can. I know. I know. I know that that sort of stuff's going to come out of him because I've, I've smelled his farts and they're horrible. <laughs> oh, I love it. I love it. All right. Well, Shannon. So moving forwards and looking forward to Brands Hatch. Uh, what are your hopes for the weekend? What's what's realistically? What do you think? Uh, we've got a bit of a plan. We've done well there every time we've been there, um, mm -hmm. except for the the year on the the second race there on the Hawk Bike when it was only one race and it was wet. But up until then, you know, we've always been really, really fast there. So hopefully, just uh, we can look at the beam at BMW and hopefully. We struggled a little bit at Alton Park with an undulating track, but all the flat tracks, it's been really good. Um, where this, we're getting back to an undulating track, so we've got a bit of a plan together to try and uh, work forward from where we finished at Alton Park. 
and I, you know, I'll be hoping that we're on the podium there somewhere. Awesome, awesome. And Bill, your thoughts about Brands Hatch as well? Yeah, definitely. I think every racer goes there with the, <laughs> you know, the chance I can get third in the championship still with uh, being about eight points off Rollo. And, um, you know, um, I think Brands has always been good to us. And now we know we can ride everywhere as well with the bike. And, you know, you always want to finish the year with a high. So I definitely want to go for a win there. So um, I think everyone's got the same intentions too. But I think we get there Friday and get a good good, good feeling with the bike. And now I don't see, you know, you know, I know I can be at the front in that class. And I, I think we deserve to have another win would be nice. So uh, it would be nice to get two before the end of the season. So, um, but a podium is always good. But a win is always a lot better going into a three-month break and then knowing that you did did good at the end and you know you can see potential where if you do if you do shit at the last round you've obviously got um a long three or four months to think about to think about it so would rather be uh yeah sorry i got this thing playing up yeah just rather be um go out with the wind to be fair so remember guys this is everyone that's tuning in it's interactive so if you have any questions before we do close the show up feel free to fire it our way um and please do share it with anyone that might enjoy the show as well so shannon um you so before we do close do you have any juicy more juicy gossip that you can share about uh, the lovely Bill, billy mcconnell uh well is, is there anything that you're allowed to share what is it is this pg no, no, I can't uh, can't tell away too many secrets. But <laughs> well, uh, one of the funny ones probably would have been uh, last weekend. We went and played golf, and uh, you know, Bill's been training real hard, not drinking, not doing any of that stuff. I said to him last week, they're like, we said it at Alt Park. If we don't win, then you know, uh, whatever. So we went to went and played golf on Saturday. We're like, let's have a beer. So we thought, fuck it, you know, we'll get pissed on uh, on Saturday night. I said, if you get pissed today, you're going to win next weekend. Went out and won. <laughs> yeah, because we turned back home. And he's like, what are you guys, drunk? Don't have a go on him. He goes, we'll have a go next week. We'll win next weekend. And then as soon as he won, he goes and grabs dad's in the corner. He goes, told you. Told you. <laughs> How do you get Brilliant. upset at that? <laughs> Brilliant. We've got a comment here from Rick Scott Scotty. Oh. Uh, <laughs> they no, love you sorry. both from the bed plan. <laughs> it was Charles Guy, we're just saying goodbye for before we were doing the sound thing. Oh. Scotty's uh, um, a weapon uh, uh, gardener. He's uh, got an allotment and he keeps dropping mm. off uh, goodies to keep us nice and strong. So cheers, Scotty. <laughs> My love gardening that. buddy. <laughs> so Ch Shannon how do you keep Billy out of uh, trouble during the winter months then how do you do that uh, I don't normally have to worry because it goes back to Australia it's not my job okay yeah well. <laughs> <laughs> I love that so, uh, so I stay here and I only go back to Australia for a month so uh, three months that he's back there he's not my drama so <laughs> as long as he comes back fit and healthy I don't, I don't care what he does <laughs> and what's happening with you this year, Shannon? Are you going to be staying or are you going to be going? Ah, uh, yeah, I'm going to be staying because there's no chance in the world of I only go back for four weeks, so to spend two weeks in a hotel isolating, yeah. it's yeah. just not really worth it. So I've had to come to terms, but I've got to stay for a winter, which I'm not really excited about. But uh, you know, it has to happen. It has to happen, doesn't it? So. And we've got a comment here from Dan Nicklin. Love you, Bill. And Nico of the heart. Is that is that a buddy or is that a fan? He's a golfing buddy. Okay. He's okay. Bill's Bill's biggest fan. <laughs> Where He's is it? Oh, okay. <laughs> Where did you go golfing? Yeah, we haven't seen him for a while, so we'll see him a Saturday if he's about. Great. And where is it that you go playing? Uh Bremker golf course. If you haven't been there, go check it out because the uh, Glider Brothers place is a legend too. So uh yeah, we have a good one. He's, he's just starting up some night golf, actually, where we're going to start up at the end of the season. So glow sticks on the tree, glow in the dark uh, pin, and then uh, glow in the dark balls, like nine holes, and everyone starts at different holes. So we're doing a comp, and then you play off your shot the, as a team. So we've got yeah, the we're G team going there. So we've got a few of us going there for the, uh, the weekend after to have a, have a bit of a whack at a comp with that night golf. So that should be good. So we uh, yeah, so probably uh, at least we can see the glow in the ball dark, uh, glow in the dark ball. Hopefully, uh, 
if you get one of them in your windscreen, he's driving past uh, past there, probably mine. I don't know what I don't know I, I don't I don't know what happened what's happened here, but the uh, Facebook thing must be slightly behind where we are. My mate's sitting in the corner, absolutely losing his shit. Something must have been pretty funny. <laughs> 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 We've got a comment here from Christopher SH saying, Nadine, what do you think of the UK? Um, what places have you been to so far? Ah, so what I guess what would have been your favorite place that you might have visited and seen so far? Besides uh, the racetrack, of course. Yeah. <laughs> Look, it's all been a different kind of beautiful. Um, but we went to Canuck which was absolutely stunning. Um, I'd still like to get to the Cotswolds, but really the Midlands are just some beautiful countryside. Mm. Anywhere you go, um, Shakespeare County has just been amazing. And, yeah, we went down to London yeah. as well for the weekend with our, our, our good friends who sponsored Chris and Louise. And uh, But unfortunately, like everything's shut, so you've got to sort yeah. of uh, book in everywhere. And start. Oh, that was yeah. the day last year. That's what it was. Yeah. Big. But yeah. it's crazy to see... Uh, you go down to London, it's so, so quiet compared to what it used to be. So it was almost uh, pretty cool in a way to see all the streets like looking like that. Look, yeah, yeah, yeah but yeah, hopefully yeah, we're going to have a log, a log cabin or something in, um, up in the, the Lake District or something like that at the end of the season or do something like that for Christmas. So, yeah. but yeah, we've just been every, every, every second week has been racing. So, uh, and then we go to Seaboard Leisure, which is in Worcester, nice which are uh, like a mm -hmm. caravan park that our friends run um, in Worcester. And that's right on the river there. So and they got their own little pub and that there. We like to spend a bit of time down there. Yeah. See Bon Leisure, that's pretty cool. So uh, That's where yeah. that's where you did the special guest from Davos from. Yeah, yeah. that's it. Yeah, that's where I was. Pub was shut though. <laughs> I look, yeah, but you know, it's just been amazing. And I think the people that I've met here have just made it feel so much like home. You know, like having Shazzy with us too. It's been it's just nice to have family around, you know, that consider family and Really, I've just met so many great people that have just been so warm and welcoming that, you know, you don't, yeah, it just feels like home. So everywhere is beautiful with the beautiful people. So, Ooh. yeah, it's all, it's all good. And yeah. Shannon, it's quite an incredible team, hasn't it? As, as Nadine and Bill have talked about, you know, it's, it's not only special to take a win, but you can feel uh, it with, with the team and everybody's yeah, just... It's unreal. They yeah. they sort of give you the freedom to do whatever you what you need yeah. to do to get the result, and uh, like Alan's unbelievable. Like he's as a team boss, like a lot of them try to get in and you know get involved, and sort of a lot of the time they're in the way. Where he's the opposite. He he's forever. The only thing he ever asks you, are you okay? Do you need anything else? You know, like what do you need to win? So it, to have their sort of backing and and be behind you a hundred percent with whatever decisions or whatever you need. It's exactly like puts you in the right frame of mind before you even get there to do your job. So um, it's really good. Mm, beautiful, beautiful. Well, guys, thank you so much. It was uh, special to see you guys celebrate, to see you guys take the win. You absolutely deserved it, Bill, the whole team, everyone. Really appreciate your time. And I'm excited about Grand's Hatch for you and also the future. So thank you. Cheers, I'll have another beer for you. Bye. Come up with Brand Hatch. So final comment there from Elton Woodhead saying good luck at Brands Skippy. Best of luck to Billy and all the team. And thanks again for joining us, every single one of you, for your comments, your questions. Uh, remember, if you know anyone that might join this, might enjoy this, please share it. Uh, go over to our YouTube. If you're not watching on YouTube, make sure you subscribe. Help us build that community so we can provide more content for you. We want to grow this as much as we possibly can and give you whatever content that you you want. So 
please join us next time. We'll be back next week. But thank you for this evening. I am Heidi Coxon, and this was Revved Up and Relived live on the Spirit of Motorsport TV. Bing, 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 bing,